something they call a series, a hybrid and a, and a parallel hybrid. My car is a parallel hybrid, meaning the gas engine can drive the wheels, or the electric engine can drive the wheels, or they both can. Uh, the Chevy Volt, like a diesel train, are both C series hybrids, so only the electric motor drives the wheels, and then the uh, gas motor, diesel motor, generates electricity. That was my question. Yeah. yeah. So the, the Prius is actually two full drive trains? Yeah, they're coupled together. And uh, so the electric motor can't drive the Prius above a certain speed. It can't spin that fast. It needs the gas motor to go at highway speeds. Depending on the model, the speed changes a bit. Is there any understanding of which is more efficient? Like it seems to me the Volt would be cheaper to build, although the prices didn't reflect that. But if you just have one drivetrain set, two. It, it should be. I think the reason the Volt is so expensive is because of the batteries. All the batteries to give you that 100 kilometer range. Um, yeah, and it should be cheaper to build because, well, so it's an electric car. It's the same as the Mitsubishi, which is 30,000. And then they just add a generator to it, which is what the motor is. Uh, but in terms of efficiency, so if you're only running on uh, gasoline, so if you've used up all your electricity, then the Prius is more efficient overall because it better combines the two. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Volt, you run a generator which produces electricity, which runs a car. So I think. Uh, I just read a study today, and a pro so a problem now when they're comparing all these vehicles is it's extremely dependent on how long your route is. So I read an article today where they compared uh, the, the Nissan Leaf with a Toyota Prius, with a Chevy Volt, with a Ford Focus, which is just a fuel efficient regular gas car, with taking the train in, in some place, I think it's Chicago or something like that. And in that one, uh, so the distance they took was pretty long. It was, it was about 80 kilometers, I think. And so it just fit inside the Leaf's round trip range. So the Leaf was the most cost effective. Well, the Leaf or the train were border. I think the Leaf was cheaper than the train under most cases. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the Chevy Volt was the next, but it was really close to the Prius because it, it used up its uh, sort of free electricity and then it ran on gasoline and then I guess the Chevy Volt needs premium gasoline so that makes it even more expensive to run when, when it's running on gas whereas the Prius will use just regular uh, uh, unleaded. Um, and then the efficiency of the Prius is higher, I think. It was all uh, US miles per gallon, so I get them all mixed up, but I think the, Sh the Chevy Volt gets in the 30s, 30 something, 35 miles per gallon, and the Prius is a higher, high 50s. If you go back to that, yeah, that explanation of the batteries and the, right there. So, these levels of charges? Yeah, so you've given us some prices on the cars before, does that include the technology to charge them, or is that something extra? So, almost all the cars come with level 1 and level 2 charging. Uh, so, level 1 is, is a regular plug-in. You can just plug it in, but it takes, especially for those big batteries, it takes a really long time. Uh, so, a maximum of 2 kilowatts. So, if that, uh, if you go in 100 kilometers and you get five kilometers per kilowatt, you need 20 kilowatts. Mm -hmm. And so this is like at least 10 hours to charge that if there were no inefficiencies. So this is, this you're looking at like 12 to 14 hour charge times. Whereas this one is just a few hours, like 16 hours to charge this. Whereas this one is sort of like overnight to use it again in the morning. So these ones come with it. Most of them, uh, both the uh, I, the Mitsubishi I and the Nissan Leaf have this ability, but you have to pay extra for it. You have to pay uh, the base price of the car is a little bit higher in order to have this fast charging built in. And the level two, you just have to put 240 volt into your garage or whatever. 
Which we yeah. Have, is probably yeah. Standard. So my garage already has this. Yeah. A lot, a lot yeah. don't. A lot of people just have some panel yeah. in their garage or whatever, so 110 volts. But would be hard. To it's, it's not a huge problem. It is more of a problem potentially, uh, like converting, like getting it here to, to this location. Yet you know they ran 208. So if you wanted a string of those in a business, it might be a little bit of a challenge, but for sure long term. So people are talking on the forums about changing the building code so that this this is in all garages. To, you know, the, the ability to plug this, this uh, level to charge into a regular garage is sort of standard in yeah. new construction. And then can you go back to the screen on the price of the cars? This one or the other one? That one. Uh, where you had the leaf. There you go. That's Canadian pricing? Or is that American pricing? Well, it, it was off American one page, but they're probably they're pretty close right now. And then uh, the other thing that I didn't talk about, because it doesn't really apply to Saskatchewan, is I think a lot of these have $7,500 rebates if you're in the States. Not in Canada. No. So we used to have that 20% off of your uh, registration in Saskatchewan, but this is the last year. I don't know. If, I haven't heard if they're going to extend it. It's election year. We'll be fine. <laughs> so just for instance, I'm trying to get down to 100 kilometers a week in the city. Like I which is really hard to do in Saskatoon because the bus connections are so bad and blah, blah, blah. But, um, like for me, that leaf would probably be more than enough. And then when I do go to Regina, I'm typically renting a car anyway. So something like that would work perfectly for me. Yeah, they say like the, the number of people that, that even, even those short, the short, like the, fi the 50 kilometer, the Chevy Volt's 56 kilometers. They're thinking we'll, we'll do almost everybody can go almost exclusively in that if they plug in at work. So the Leaf looked like it was a four passenger. Did, did you have a picture of the Mitsubishi there? Uh, the Mitsubishi is a four and the Leaf I think is a five. I don't know. This, leaf. this one's just four. It looks significantly smaller. Yeah. Go back to the Leaf. It looks like it's, a, it's almost just a little bit slightly smaller than the previous, but very similar shape. Yeah. And the Mitsubishi again. This one's more, just of, a, more of a bubble. That's are these, right. Are these available? This one's not available yet. Not in North America. How do they drive in the winter time? That I don't know. How do yours drive in the winter time? Mine's okay. It, it's almost all gas. So the hybrid part didn't really come into play as much. It's the electric heaters that you worry about to heat the car. And yeah. So one thing that they have on, on almost all of these is the climate control can be worked uh, off your iPhone. So your car is plugged in already. You can pre-warm it or pre-cool it. You can say, oh, I'm going for a ride and in 20 minutes, heat my car up now. And so then it will use the electricity out of the uh, plug-in to heat the interior of the vehicle, get it up to temperature, and then when you're, you're driving, you don't need to eat as much. But when it's so cold here, it, that one lasts very long. One thing that I found with my car, probably a lot of these, is they're, they're so low that the, the big ruts in the snow we get. And the potholes. And <laughs> the potholes, yeah. But that's not really an electric vehicle issue, I guess it's no. similar with the, well, So I'm really excited to see what happens with these. Oh, did I have another slide about my So I'm looking at uh, starting an electric vehicle association in uh, Saskatchewan. And my main motivation is to um, lobby or influence the 
charge stations so that we get uh, green, green power going into whatever electric vehicles end up here. There's a number of electric vehicle associations in existence already and a lot of them were focused on helping people do conversions. They take an old Chevy S10 and you know, guys working together to get parts and stuff like that. They weren't uh, looking at new vehicles. But I'm more, I'm more thinking of having the infrastructure in place for new vehicles. Is that the wind? No, it's not thunder on my bike. <laughs> Sign me up. I don't want to do a revolution, but I will do an evolution. <laughs> I'm trying to get a, that's what I was so excited about Brian, is that electric bike. <laughs> so I guess he has an electric bike already. The first pure plug-in electric vehicle I know of. <laughs> but I was trying to decide maybe it's a hybrid. <laughs> he still needs to pedal. When we were in Honolulu, we rented those, um, what are they called, Se Segways? Oh, okay. They're cool. They're electric, of course. I was at the, uh, the car show at the uh, Dragons. And some guy, just some customer, like some guy going through the show, was riding one of those up and down the aisles. Well, they're rated as if they're a wheelchair. Oh, okay. So you ride them on the sidewalks. And quite amazing. So how far can you go? I rented them in Hawaii, and you can go three, four hours. I don't know how far it is. You probably... They go a little faster than walking? Yeah, 10, 12 kilometers now. Or actually 10, 12 miles an hour, I think it was. So you're moving, you're clipping along. And it was really intuitive to... Uh... I, yeah, we got it in, Quinn and I got it in five minutes. It's quite, and you're walking, like there's a lot of people on the streets, so you're, you know, you, you're really nervous at first if you run somebody over or hit somebody, and of course, most of the people on the street are pissed that you're on the sidewalk or mad that you're there, so <laughs> they're kind of giving you a look. And, there's, there's some kid on Dragon's Den who made a, a, a motorcycle, it's like a motorcycle, but it was a single wheel. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a double wheel, like a Segway. I think it was the same electronics, but it was looked like a motorcycle. Oh, okay. I wonder if we'll get more and more of that stuff. So I've never been in, involved with something like this before. Have you? There's a guy in Manitoba who was giving me some advice. And, Started up, but he might be a bit more passionate than I'm ready for. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Brent. Sure, no problem.